Hello and welcome to this next video presentation on the genesis of the periodic table. Now, historically, the elements with similar or related properties were grouped together into a family of elements. For example, lithium, sodium and potassium formed the family of active metals, whereas copper, silver and gold from the family of the noble metals. Based on the systematic relationship among the elements, a chart known as the periodic table evolved that reflected systematic trends in the physical and chemical properties of the elements. Thus, the periodic table is an arrangement of elements in a tabular form on the basis of their properties that facilitates the systematic study of properties of elements. Now, the, as we look at the genesis of the periodic table, the early attempts at classification of elements were based on experimental observations on a limited number of experiments that were known at its time. Therefore, we start with Dobrainer's triads, Newland's octaves, Lothermeyer's curves, Mendeleev's periodic table, and finally, the modern periodic table by Henry Moseley. Now, why do all of these fail? The predominant reason being that as newer elements were discovered, it became difficult to incorporate those elements into the given table or the given design or the given trend observed. And as a result, each and every succeeding table or classification failed. But first, let's have a look from a historic point of view of how these developments happened and as a result of which I chose to speak on the genesis of the periodic classification. The first, in 1829, German scientist Dobrainer was able to identify several groups of three elements that showed similarity in the physical and chemical properties. He observed that in a set of three elements having similar properties, so-called triads, the atomic weight of the middle element is the arithmetic mean of the atomic weights of the other two elements. Like for example, as you can see on this uh, presentation, we have the atomic masses of lithium, sodium and potassium. Now, if you look at sodium, who has an atomic mass number 23 and lithium 7 and potassium 39, when we take the average of this uh, 7 and 39, that is of lithium and potassium, we get the atomic mass number of sodium. Similarly, it was done for a combination of chlorine, bromine, iodine or calcium, strontium, barium, and even for sulfur, selenium and tellurium. However, only a few such triads were available at that time. And day by day, as many more elements got discovered, the rule could no longer be generalized. Later on came an English chemist, Alexander Newlands, who made the next attempt at classification of elements. He arranged the 56 known elements in an increasing order of their atomic weights and observed that the properties of every eighth element are similar to that of the first. If you realize, hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, all of them have a valency one, as a consequence of which he did observe that um, they have similar trends or similar properties. But today we do know the different natures of hydrogen, the different behaviors it shows. Comparatively, if you look at lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, they're all the group one of the modern periodic table. So when he compared this relationship to the octave of a music with every eight notes, probably you could say it as do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, re, do, or the sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa, 
I am not a singer, so obviously I cannot really sing it for you. But um, when he compared it to these eight notes, he called this law the Newlands Octaves. Octave stands for the eight keys of music. The elements were arranged as we can see on the table. But however, this, <clears throat> some of the limitations were that the inert gases were not discovered at that time. And beyond calcium, the repetition was not observed. It's pretty um, inappropriate to actually place cobalt and nickel, who are sort of transition elements, along with fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Vice versa to, to, to do the same with copper or zinc with the lineup of beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium. So there were these abnormalities or irregularities developing as newer elements were discovered, as a result of which they had to remove this table from being used. Then came Lothar Myers' curve. Obviously, I'm Kyle Myers, but with no relation to Lothar Myers. Now, Lothar Myers plotted a graph of atomic volume versus atomic mass, where the atomic volume was defined as a ratio of the gram atomic mass of an element to the density in gram per ml. The curve obtained to as Lothar Myers' curve is as we can see on the screen. And what were some of the things he observed from this table? The elements having similar properties are on the same position of the curve. For example, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium are at the peaks of the curve, if we look at it, while alkaline earth metals, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium are at the descending part of the curve. Halogens, that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, are at the ascending part of the curve. Most of the transition elements are lying in the broad minimas of the curve. So with this, we observe that, you know, these trends, these elements have similar properties. The atomic volume of the elements changes periodically in a period. It initially decreases and then increases with broad minimas. The atomic volume increases in a group, that is, in elements that exhibit similar properties. Many other physical properties of the elements also change in a periodic table or in a periodic manner. Like, for example, we could take melting point, boiling point, density, thermal expansion, coefficient, etc. Based on these properties, what he proposed was that the physical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights and thus formed this and thus this form the basis of the Mendeleev's periodic table. And therefore, we now move to Mendeleev's periodic table and a very, very surprising news would be that the earliest version of this current form of the periodic table was presented simultaneously by Mendeleev of Russia and Lothar Myers of Germany. Both the scientists arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic weights and observed that elements with similar properties in their families, particularly, appeared at regular intervals. Thus, Mendeley's periodic law stated that the physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights, or we can say their atomic mass number. Therefore, in 1871, Mendeleev published a short periodic table, which consisted only of 63 elements. Inert gases were not even discovered at that time. The elements were arranged in seven horizontal rows called as periods and eight vertical columns called as groups. Some vacant spaces were specified for undiscovered elements and their properties, which were predicted by him. These were found to be true and verified when these elements were discovered later and as a consequence of which he was called the father of the periodic table. In the periodic table also constructed the elements in their families that is like for example lithium, sodium, potassium were arranged in the vertical columns designated as groups either one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in Roman numbers. The horizontal rows were referred to as a series. So Mendeleev's periodic table later on got modified after the discovery of the inert gas elements and several other elements. The inert gases were placed in a new group called the zero group. Each long period was divided into two series named as the odd and even depending on the serial number. The first seven elements formed the even series and the last seven elements formed the odd series. Uh, keep in mind, he did not include the inert elements into this. The vertical groups, group one and group seven were further divided into two subgroups, A and B, to accommodate elements with different properties. The elements of even series in the long periods were placed in subgroup A while the elements of odd series were placed in subgroup B. The group 0 was not further split and the group 8, three sets containing three elements each, were placed. The designation of the groups A and B given here is quite arbitrary and new designation is given in the long form of the periodic table as per the latest convention. Now some important characteristics of the modern periodic table that was not by Mendeleev, Mosley, but the one by Mendeleev. Uh, let's talk about some of its properties. Let's talk first about the horizontal rows or the periods. The first period consisted of two elements and was known as a very short period. The second consisted of eight known as the first short period. The third consisted of eight elements known as the second short period. The third, which also consisted of, sorry, third I finished, the fourth, which consisted of 18 elements, was known as the first long period. The fifth consisted of 18 elements too, and was also known as the second long period, while the sixth was the 32 elements period, was known as a very long period, and the seventh was known as the incomplete period. He left it for areas for it to grow. And if we look at the vertical columns of the groups, each of them were given names. Group 1B was uh, the alkali metals, while Group 2B would be um, the alkaline earth metals. Group 5B, the nicogens, while Group 7B, the halogens. Group 0 would be the inert elements. So he gave some of these properties. Um, now, if you have wondered what are, uh, uh, you know, some of the other features, if you have to think about in this table, um, lanthanides or the lanthanoids of the rare earths, these elements from basically uh, atomic number 58 to 71, the word which refers to the oxides, or in fact, the elements are found in nature, first in the form of their oxides, hence they were called as the rare earths. The name sometimes confuses with suggestibility for the availability of rare means not appropriately found, but rather they're widely found in nature. Then the actinides, which included uh, elements from uh, atomic number 90 to 108, 103, sorry. Then there were coinage metals, which included copper, silver, and gold, metals used as currency. The noble elements of metals like silver, gold, platinum, and mercury became of very road reactivity. Then the transuranium elements beyond uranium were known as the transuranium elements. The elements in the third period called as the bridging elements because the concept of subgroups A and B starts after this period and also these elements maintain some similarities in properties with both subgroups A and B. There was a diagonal relationship also identified from this periodic table. There are three sets of elements that is the lithium magnesium, beryllium aluminium and boron silicon which though placed in different groups show similarities in their properties. Such kind of similarity in properties is known as the diagonal relationship and attributed to similar sizes. So these are some of the other features one did observe from Mendeleev's periodic table. But however, for the fact that Mendeleev was um, the father of the periodic table, there must have been some key merits to the periodic table and also for the fact that his 
periodic table was replaced later on by another, there must have been some demerit. So let's look at two important uh, points, that is the merits and the demerits of this periodic table. Point number one, the study of the properties of elements became more systematic and easier in the merits, while let's continue with some of the merits itself. Several vacant positions which were kept for guidance led to the discovery of new elements with was found today. That was one of the other beautiful things which Mendeley did and actually one of the reasons why he was credited to be the father of the periodic table. The rectification of atomic weights was done for several elements. For example, beryllium and aluminium showed similar properties. So it was considered to be that the valency of beryllium is three like aluminium. Hence the atomic weight of beryllium equivalent weight multiplied by the valency that was 4.5, which was experimentally determined for the equivalent weight. And valency 3 gave us a product of 13.5. But there was no suitable position found for beryllium according to its calculated atomic mass. But actually, the valency of beryllium is 2 according to the group number. And its atomic weight is rectified to 4.5 into 2 equals 9. Similarly, the atomic weight rectification is also done for indium. Other points would be that he also included the zero group, which did not disturb much of the original periodic table. Now, obviously, as he has failed, we have some demerits. Some of the elements were wrongly placed, though their atomic weights are larger compared to the next one. For example, argon 40, to potassium 39. Tellurium 127.6 and indium 126.9. Cobalt 58.5 and 58.6. Now, when you hear this point, I want you to go back to the periodic table by Mendeleev and look at what I have said. Make a note of it, and then look back at that video and observe the wrongly placed positions of those elements. Now, Though isotopes have different masses, yet they do not have a different significant position on this periodic table, which should have been given considering the fact that this table was based on atomic masses. Subgroup elements do not have sufficient similar properties, yet are placed in the same group. The position of hydrogen was uncertain, whether for group 1A or group 7B. The rare earth elements, 4F and 5F series are all placed in 3A and do not have any separate position in the table. The classification of metals and non-metals is not done. And group 8, three elements together created a bit of problem. So, therefore, the modern periodic table. 1913, Dr. Henry Mosley performed an experiment in which he bombarded high-speed electrons on different metal surfaces and obtained X-rays. What he did was, first of all, when I spoke about the fact that for, of the work that he did, was in the field of X-rays, because he's an English physicist whose contribution was to the science of physics. But by using the physics, he was able to come up with the chemical concept of atomic number. And this stemmed the way for the X-ray spectra of Mosley's law that led to the discovery of the modern periodic table. Now, as I said, Henry Mosley did this experiment in 1913 where he bombarded high-speed electrons on different metal surfaces and obtained the X-rays. He observed that there existed a systematic mathematical relationship between the wavelength of the X-rays produced and hence the frequency and that in relation to the atomic number of the element. This came to be the Mosley's law, which is expressed as we can see. The square root of the frequency in, is in proportion to the atomic number. The plot of the square root of the frequency versus the atomic number is plotted and you find a straight line graph. Mosley's experiment did show that a proper sequence criteria for the periodic arrangement of atoms was not the atomic weight, but the atomic number. The 
cause of similarity of properties was the repetition in the outer shell electronic configuration at regular intervals. This observation formed the basis of the modern periodic table. And thus, according to the modern periodic law, the physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic number. The long form of the periodic table is based upon this modern periodic law. And thus, we had to modify Mendeleev's table and come up with this periodic table. In my successing videos, I will be talking about some of the trends and the properties of the modern periodic table. So for that, I would like to tell you, if you are ever studying this, a wonderful book is obviously the J.D. Lee um, for Inorganic Chemistry. And some of my other images cited through this periodic table, thanks to these websites for some of the wonderful images. And thank you everyone. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel.